Hey, hey guys, Rusty here with Rusty Forge, and in this tutorial, you're going to learn how to make 8x8 eight eight characters and how to make them uh, look like they're looking to the side. And then in our next video in this tutorial series, you can learn how to animate those, how to make them walk, how to make them jump, and how to make them attack and block. So why 8x8? Eight eight? Well, let me show you Johan's creations here on his Tumblr page. Uh, he made these all, he made 100 characters 8x8. Eight eight. You can see Sonic, you can see Mario, see all sorts of characters here. You can see Street Fighters, uh, DuckTales, Mickey Mouse, um, and even Pokemon there at the very end. He's able to make all these using 8x8 eight eight pixels and a very simple uh, Pico 8 palette. Um, you can go ahead and check out his newest game on Steam, Curses and Chaos. But let me show you what he ended up doing for these right here, guys. He took the Mario and Luigi and he animated them. Look how amazing that is. And this is very simple. It just takes some practice. So let's get started making our 8x8 characters. As you guys can see here, a 16x16 16 16 takes four times as much space in details in 8x8. 32x32 is going to take 16 times that same amount of detail. So an 8x8 is amazing for you to be able to use your imagination, make your creations come to life without having to get every single angle and line perfect. All right, so let's get started creating our archer and skeleton. Those are very two characters. So to do this, we're going to place the eyes first. All right, one eye there, one eye there. And these eyes are actually going to be big eyes. So we've got an eye there, an eye there. And this one, your body is going to be, or your head's going to be three, and your body is going to be three as well. And we want the arms. Uh, right now, colors really doesn't matter because we're going to go and change that in a little bit. And we'll give this guy some yellow hair. There we go. Make it look cool. All right, there we go. We got our first cursed person. Very simple. A uh, three square head, a three square body, little feet, and the arms can be as long or as short as you want them. All right, now on our skeleton. Let's go ahead in here. The difference between these two is the bigger head. And it plays a difference in, in how you animate these things as well. All right, so you have just a smaller body, but it's a four by four body instead of a three by three body. There you go. And now we have our skeleton as well, which means uh, we also have very much so smaller hands because the focus is on the head, which allows more facial animations and cuteness and stuff like that. So, all right, from here, let's turn these sideways. Rotating these characters is actually fairly easy. So what do we want to do here is we want to extend the shirt. There you go. And then we rebuild the arm. And we're going to rebuild it like this. Kind of make it bent a little bit since we're kind of stuck. <laughs> let's move our character over. All right. And... We're going to rebuild it. There you go, like that. And we're going to add some of the head back up here. Extend the blonde hair. And there you go. Uh, we're going to also fix the other arm while we're at it. All right. So this arm is shorter because it's actually behind on the other side of the body. And so you can even go in here and uh, Move the legs like this. So what this is showing us here is that this section right here is the front side of the body. It's actually more like this right here is the front side of the body, whereas this is the other side of the body. Um, so everything on this side actually is behind the body. That's why your arm looks shorter is because it's connecting behind the body. And as you can see with the eyes, it naturally makes this look like we're looking that way. All right, for the skeleton, this one is fairly easy as well. We're just going to chop off this part of his head. And we're going to move it over to here. There we go. As easy as that. And now it looks like our skeleton. I didn't even chop it off. But anyways, it still looks like our skeleton is looking in the other direction. So there you go. Now our skeleton is looking that direction. And what I actually do when I do this on this, these bigger ones is I can move back. 
just a little bit. And you can even chop this down on these guys, make their bodies shorter. And there you go. All right, this is my favorite part is the adding of detail because the head is turned here and that's the front. So what we want to do is we want to use our dithering pin. You're going to hear me call it D pin a whole lot. I'm going to change this to about a 10. Because we're not doing old school, we can go into a lot of detail here. All right? What in the world? Okay, you don't want it light. I want it dark. I forgot to turn this dark. There you go. And this provides some shadowing and uh, makes it look like that part of the head is turned um, and facing that way. We can shadow this side of the body as well to make it look more like it's turned. With that, uh, we can then take this color, and I'm going to turn his sleeves to this color, because I really like that. All right, there you go. So let's make this guy look more like an archer than just a random guy in, in a yellow shirt. All right, there we go. Move the hand down to the side, and we're going to move the rest of the body back. skeleton he looks great I uh, don't think I need to make any more changes on him and uh, let's go ahead and yeah. what do you guys think look good not look good I think it looks fine all right let's go ahead since he's turned at an angle let's go ahead and take away that corner right there and then before there we go. All right, so now we got our people looking at an angle. We can add some more detail to them, and uh, they are ready to go. Actually, we're going to give our skeleton a sword. Um, no, I want him to have a shield. <laughs> In our next video, we're going to animate these two to allow a nice little battle scene.